Well, there's a reason they come out with a lot more gray hair than when they went in. Uh, true story. True story. Hey, welcome back to another exciting episode of Spellstorm Miniatures. My name is Jeremiah. I'm Dan. And I'm Chad. And our goal here is to inspire you to play more. Uh, today, we're going to get a little bit uh, philosophical, maybe. We're going to get a little reflective, maybe. Uh, we basically, one of our Patreon supporters uh, presented a question to us. And so we're going to interact with this question. Uh, were you impressed or disappointed in how some hobby companies or game companies handled themselves during the pandemic. So that's gonna be the main topic for the day. And I'm looking forward to having that conversation uh, with you guys. And uh, I think um, as we begin to possibly make the turn, I think a lot of us are reevaluating our connection to the hobby and, and what it did for us, and what it didn't do for us and things like that. And the role that some of these companies played um, had something to do with that. So, so we'll get there eventually, but first I just want to ask, um, have you guys played any games lately? Uh, just the typical switch games for me. Um, actually went back a little bit to, uh, Mario's versus Rabbids just to play around with that. <laughs> Can't get that little fix going on, but. <laughs> Very cool. I've been, I've been playing a lot of Diablo three. Um, my roommates and another buddy, played a couple games of commander last weekend but um it's about it we have not gotten a chance to play any more king's dilemma since the last time that we recorded um so we're looking forward to finishing up those last couple of sessions i think before uh, as we come to the close in that game which should be exciting nice nice um i got a few games in um oz and i got another game of flesh and blood in uh, we're, we're liking that card game very much. And I've been, I've been doing this thing where every time I go into Rune and Board, I'll buy a couple of packs each for each of us. And so we'll come home and we'll open them together. And, and then we kind of divvy out which ones we want. And, you know, and, and so he is going to eventually, I think, have enough to be able to make a second deck um, for the Young Hero format which I think they call Blitz. Um, I at least have a young hero that I want to use, um, but I don't think I have enough cards quite yet to, uh, he's a little bit closer to the goal than I am. But we very much enjoy the game and and we'll, we'll continue to play it. So, um, you know, Strixhaven uh, came out and we pre-ordered one of each of the commander decks. And it was so awesome. We, we went in and got them from Rune and Board and took them home. And and then we opened them and played right out of the box, a five-player commander game. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I can't remember who won. I actually might have won that. <laughs> I, I, I might have won that. But, um, but it, was a, it was a fantastic, uh, it was fantastic. Just playing right out of the box, sealed events, um, you know, and they're all, you know, in each deck, we were all very impressed with some of the cards that were in the deck and, Obviously impressed with our individual commanders that we chose. Um, I think Ozzy did not use the designated commander. Um, mm. he, I think he used the backup one that was in the deck. Um, but other than that, I think we all... It was fun. So, But as far as miniatures games, uh, Oz and I got a game of Age of Sigmar in last week. So we played uh, 1,000 points of uh, his, his Fire Slayers against my Skaven. And um, I got destroyed. It wasn't, wasn't <laughs> good. Uh, bad choices were made. And uh, we, we got, and, and the choices, and the bad choices came um, during the combat phase. Um, because in Age of Sigmar, even when it's not your turn, you, know, you, have, you still have a chance to combat. It's just that the player's turn it is gets to choose the first unit to fight. Yeah. And and so basically I just chose out of order and it really helped him. So 
and then and then we did get a game of War Machine in as well. So I, um, I very much it's it's hard. I love War Machine, and every time I put it on the table, I'm reminded about how much I like it. And every time I'm done, I'm reminded of how much I want to play it again. Like I just want to re rack. You know, even if it's the same list, just re rack and go. So I ran Butcher three against Oz. Uh, he was playing Fexus again, um, and I misjudged the distance on something. So didn't wasn't able to do the assassination run that I wanted. He tried to assassinate me and realized how hard Butcher three is to assassinate. Yeah, um, <laughs> all of them are. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> all of them and are. Then, Turns out. Turns out 14, 18 with like almost 20 hitboxes is pretty durable. Especially it's hard. if you still got a couple focus on him. Exactly. Well, yeah, in the turn that he tried, I I, I was almost full camp. So he, Oof. he he should have tried another turn. But yeah. Um but my my big hoorah, the thing that I wanted to do most, I was so frustrated because he he did uh, he took one of the wardens and did uh, like a grand slam and knocked my Kodiak down. And I really wanted my Kodiak to be standing for what I wanted him to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so after a couple failed assassination runs, uh, we were playing super casually. We weren't using the clock or anything. Um, you know, we had dinner. I had a, a meeting that I needed to go to that night, and so it was. It, we we kind of played kind of late afternoon, early evening time, and so we had to had to had to go on to the next thing. We couldn't play there all night, so. Otherwise, we probably would have finished the game eventually. So. Yeah, but, yeah. I really, I really need to bust out all my Riot Quest stuff with my roommates because I'm pretty sure it's a game I could convince them to play. Yeah, um, and we've got the space for it. It's just uh, finding the finding the time to pull it all out because I own <laughs> I own everything that's been released so far. Let's see, there's no excuse not to then. Yeah. So, well, it's not all, all nice. fully. It's not all fully painted yet. Oh, okay. Well, that's the only excuse. But, yeah, yeah. I've been um, uh, I've been going through my underworld stuff, Chad. And this, um, I was looking for cards for you. Yeah. Um, I found dice and tokens that you'll want to use. Um, okay, cool. Because you don't have a starter. And then um, the the only cards I have, because I've I've been sharing a lot of the cards that I have. Um, I have a bunch of premium or promo cards. So if you're interested, I can kick them your way. But yeah, sure, that'd be um, cool. Yeah, because that way you can start making a fun deck. So anyway, yeah. hey, why don't we get to our topic? Um, talking about um, you know the hobby companies and the game companies that you know that uh, that we buy from, and you know, and so the question on the table is: Were you impressed by them or disappointed by them? In the way that they handle themselves during the pandemic, I'll I can go first, I suppose. Um, I know normally I ask the question and I don't go first, but um, <laughs> uh, I started looking at some of the companies that I um, w interacted with, and um, and I wanted to, and I started listing out the things that I was impressed by. And then the things that I was disappointed by. And so rather than just looking at a company on the whole, um, I took note of the things that, um, that they did that I was impressed by. So like, for example, um, Parabellum in general, I've been pretty impressed by them with how they've been rolling out Conquest um, you know, product and introducing, you know, the new faction and getting it on the shelves and in customers' hands, they've been they've been doing a lot of online support, uh, just community building, and and like the community has something to to say about the storyline and things like that, and and I, I I pulled them out because I found them during the pandemic, and it's so yeah, I have they're no pretty they're a pretty new company, aren't they? I think so. Con Conquest is a pretty new game. Yeah, it, it it did exist before pandemic, but I didn't know about it, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And and so I don't I don't have any basis of comparison. So my only interaction with them has been during the pandemic. And honestly, I've been on the whole pretty impressed by some of the things they're doing. Um, one of the things I was disappointed in is that I had tried to become a, a vanguard for the company and and uh, they didn't accept me right away. And I, so I was sad about that. So <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so I kind of did that with like all the different companies, you know, um, war, war cradle studios. Um, I've been very impressed by them, like very impressed by them. Um, cause, cause, uh, not only have they been releasing new content for games that existed, they're rolling out, you know, the, the new version of dystopian wars, which is a beloved game by a lot of people in the community. And and they've been giving away free material. Like one of the things they've been giving away is a, a special A4 size uh, rule book, and they called it the Salty Dog Edition. Mm -hmm. And 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 they were just giving away for free. Just mail it to your house for free. Just fill out this thing online, and you know, and just super interactive on the Discord and the Facebook, and um, and you know, and, and things like that. And I actually did become one of their war hosts and they sent me a really nice polo to wear when I, when I were run events eventually in the store, I'll look official. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, so companies have been doing some really good things. Um, and I, I and I, and I want to make sure that I highlight a lot of the good things that they're doing. Um, you know, uh, here's one that's really good actually. I'm just going to keep talking until one of you interrupt me, but, um, <laughs> but weird games. So, um, you know, so uh, the third edition of Malifaux rolled out and, you know, and they're going to be re-engaging the other side and eventually they're going to be doing um, like a two player crossover starter box that with models that are going to play in both worlds, Malifaux and the other side, which I'm so excited about. And um, one of the things that they did is they established a loyalty program for their online store. So as a customer, you every time you buy from them, you get points, and then you can use those points for, you know, a five dollar off coupon or some free product or thing. Although I haven't got my free product from them, but um, they're like little tokens <laughs> and stuff, you know. But um, but one of the things um, that I was very very impressed by is. Um, is I really, really wanted the From Nightmare book, uh, From Nightmares book, which is one of the source books for the, the Through the Breach RPG. They did not put it on the website for me to purchase until it had already gone, until it went through the local friendly game stores. So for like a month, people who had ordered through the game store had their book a month ahead of time than anybody who uh, who ordered online. And and I thought that was super awesome. Um, especially during, you know, during pandemic when we hear stories about stores going under and closing up and things like that. And so here's a company who wants to support the local shop and they and they <laughs> and with their own policy put their money where their mouth was. And um, and so so simultaneously creating this loyalty program, but then also simultaneously supporting the local. So I think that was a really good example of a company, um, you know, responding positively during this time. Yeah. So. And that's pretty cool too, because not only that, but they're probably selling it online the same as you could buy it at your game store. Right. So yeah. They're, and they're selling to them cheaper. So there's, they're even losing money technically on it. Right. <laughs> but they want you to support their, you know, your game store. Like you said, you need to, you need to support them and, and uh, help them out because well there's less people playing and if the game stores go under where do you play and then you don't have any game so yeah for the long term it's kind of smart um i also purchased some stuff during the easter sale um using your link too so that you know you can get some credit um <laughs> thank you dan <laughs> yeah no problem so hopefully you got that credit but anyway uh yeah i mean i was still surprised about like shipping came around really fast like i had it like within a week i think <laughs> like not even that like i was like wow with everything else going on i thought oh i won't see this for a while but yeah um 
Now, what I've liked too, they've been still chugging along pretty good pace, releasing some of their new stuff. Like I said, they're redoing um, second edition Malifo stuff and making the third editions and adding the new models in there. There's even a new thing coming out. So, yeah, they just keep hitting with stride, it seems. Well, I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed by companies that continue to put things out there. Like mm -hmm. um, Corvus Belly, you know, I think I think Code 1 dropped right at the very beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And like N4 dropped at the end of summer or the beginning of fall or something last year. And, you know, and, and then like, you know, and with the Dystopian Wars coming out through World Cradle Studios, like companies were saying, you know, we're, we're still here. You yeah. know, and we yeah. we have games that we want you to play. We're sorry, you can't play them, but we're here. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's okay. what I'm hearing from. That's yeah. what I'm hearing from some of the companies. Yeah. Not not all the companies are doing that. Yeah, um, that was April of 2020. So yeah, like, yeah. Is that when Code One dropped? Yeah, April 2020. Yeah, see, yeah. yeah, that's like that's when everyone was in lockdown. There wasn't a soul going outside. You know, we couldn't find toilet paper. And yet code one was available for you to read for free online. You know? <laughs> I'm sure they already had a pre plan going, but yeah, it's just like uh yeah, yeah. Caster was released in June of twenty twenty. Yeah. Right. You know, and so yeah, you got these games launching and it's really amazing too to see how well some of them have still continued to do um yeah, yeah. or or purchased. And well, it's, they're not I even getting didn't, as well. yeah. didn't the Warcaster Kickstarter start like right before we went into yeah. shelter in place? It was like right on I there. Feel like yeah. it, I feel like yeah. I feel like it was like right at the very beginning of the pandemic is when that Kickstarter yeah. started, and then it it released in June. Um, when they've had two other Kickstarters. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, let me find that. I, I think one of the things that I also like is is not just releasing new content or new products for people to purchase, but then just also like a lot of the companies with their social media presence and putting out videos and and things like that. I think those are the companies that um you know that I, I feel really good about. Um one of the companies that I feel like I can miss the opportunity was, was privateer press. Um, even though they were yeah. putting out the Kickstarters and stuff, but I feel their overall like content that they were putting out reduced dramatically. Yeah. And, it, yeah. You know, it, it unfortunately kind of went to basically nothing. Um, yeah. It was kind of disappointing, really disheartening to see a little bit. Um, Cause I had gotten used to watching the painting hangout with Jordan Lamb. I remember when they were still doing that, like during the Warcaster Kickstarter, and they were doing uh, like videos for like magnetization of the jacks and stuff like that. Um, I feel like they have been going through a lot of a lot of difficult times in the last couple of years, and I think this pandemic was another big hit. They had finally gotten. I think it was 2019, if I remember right. They finally had moved their HQ out of Bellevue and into Redmond, I think along with their factory and got yeah. into new offices. And, um, we've been seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of staff reduction. And I know that like, even during the pandemic, some of the staff had moved on to other opportunities and uh, I don't know, it's, it's really tough to see. It's really tough to see what it is that's going on. Um, and I kind of understand the the reduction in a lot of their videos and things like that, because a lot of their videos um, revolved around two or three or four different staff members working on the same thing, because a lot of them were um, like live stream things, like live stream plays, where they had like mm -hmm. two people playing a game and one person and like somebody running the camera and watching the chat and answering questions and stuff like that. And it was a little difficult to do, and I think that is kind of reminiscent of uh, just the way that the U.S. kind of handled the entire situation of the pandemic. And um, uh, I think a lot of people just failed to pivot and and take it head on, and they were kind of left sitting on their butt for some of it. Yeah. 
That's not really. I mean, in that content, like I said, they had the dev streams that were going, right? And you can't yeah. clearly do out two people. I mean, maybe you could have figured out a way to put that across some sort of other medium to actually still get it out there would have been nice. Um, yeah. yeah. You're right. When I think about it, there has been that drastic decrease of content out yeah. of it. Um, well, even, I know even that, this program that we're using, they yeah. could have used. They didn't even have to yeah. be in the same room. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I know. So, I know. I remember watching one of the dev streams where um, Will and Oz were in the same room, but they were sitting on opposite sides of the room and they just had two cameras set up. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it's kind of weird. I hadn't paid a lot of attention to a lot of the different companies uh, during the last year. Because uh, I work at a game store, it, a lot of it still kind of felt like business as usual a little bit in some ways, because some people were still putting product out. We were going through our own thing of getting an online site um, running so that we could do curbside pickup, and that's a different, that's a whole other subject of just businesses, especially game stores, um, pivoting, which is, I guess it's kind of similar, pivoting to be able to still function, like, and if you... Because if you can't, if you can't adapt and change, then you get left behind, and you yeah. have to be able to adapt to those difficulties and those challenges, uh, and adjust and and stop and say, okay, what we were doing before isn't really working or not really possible right now. How do we change it and still survive and keep moving forward? Um, a lot of what I saw, I, I try not to talk too much about working at the game store on here because I want to be a person of the community first and an employee second or third. Um, and I also don't want to feel like we're giving too much favoritism. Um, but it was really interesting to watch. Basically what I saw was kind of like the change in communities rather than the response to what businesses were doing. Um, something that I did find out this year from uh, Gamma Online uh, I sat in on a panel for Steam Forged Games, who does, um, they do God Tier, they do uh, a bunch of different video game based board games like Horizon Zero Dawn, Resident Evil. Um, they did the, the Dark Souls board game. They also did Guild Ball. Um, they actually still, they announced that they still hit 95% of their release dates on time last year. Uh, because they were able to just kind of adjust accordingly um, and still keep putting product out, which was pretty yeah, impressive, pretty considering, impressive considering how ridiculous 2020 was. Right. Um, <laughs> but one of, the, one of the major things that I saw, or at least a couple of major things that I saw between two communities was uh, the beginning of the pandemic, or, you know, right around like May, April, May, when people started to be able to kind of go out a little bit more than just like the bare necessities is I saw, we saw a really big increase in GW product sales and then paints, like just any paints, tools, hobby supplies, stuff like that. Uh, and I think that was kind of, it's kind of um, telling, it's very telling of the GW community of how many people still just love to collect and hobby and paint even if they can't play games um the community yeah. s still seems so focused on the hobby aspect of it and we saw such a huge surge of that um and it was really interesting to see and then the flip the uh the other side of that was also um the privateer press community um the war machine community especially like in the local area once we saw stores closing, no longer hosting events and things like that, it felt like the the entire community kind of shifted and was like, okay, well, how can I still play games? And they were trying to do anything they could to still play games. People were going back to Vassal, no matter how many times, like, <laughs> no matter how much you hear people complain about Vassal, people were still using it because that's how they could get games. And then the community, yeah. the, some people in the community created War Table, and there was this huge swarm to War Table. Um, and because not only could you kind of play games when you could, it may take longer, but you know, you could do it when you had time or you could do it whenever you could find time. 
Um, and not only that, also now you can suddenly play games and you don't need to own the models. And, and I think yeah. this in conjunction with the push to theme forces a lot is we basically saw war machine model sales completely stop in their tracks because there's just not as much of a demand or a drive in the community to fully become faction complete or get all, you know, get everything in a faction because if it's not part of whatever the strongest theme force is right now, there's not really any point in owning those models. Uh, whereas in like the, the 40 K or the age of Sigmar community, the GW community, there's still so many people that just love the look of space Marines and, um, you know, chaos space Marines or Necrons who still just want to collect everything. And it was yeah. very interesting to see the dynamic between those two different communities. Um, when before COVID, when it had been kind of the opposite, like, our GW sales were a little bit lower paints, you know, were about the same, but like we had people in the store playing privateer. Like we had people in the store every single week playing war machine and buying models and keeping up on whatever the new releases were and stuff. And it just seemed like the pandemic just put all of that on halt. And again, I think that's kind of telling of also kind of telling of like the way that uh, the U S kind of handled everything. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say I was gonna circle back on a couple things there. Yeah, you touched a lot of points there. Um, one uh, going kind of on the Kickstarter thing. Um, I guess that's one company I follow more. That's a lot of companies. Um, fulfillment <laughs> wise, you're saying ninety five percent on time. That's really good, as we know most Kickstarters are delayed, and even more so yeah. during the pandemic. They got pushed, pushed some more. Um, some companies are better than others, but you know you got some of the some of the big ones um, that go on. I'm still waiting for one game from a couple years ago, but hey, that's a, another matter. But I, either way, was it Super Dungeon Explorer? No, um, <laughs> it, it was Chronicle. Yeah, no, Super Dungeon Explorer. That's another one to talk about too. Um, but uh, <laughs> Chronicle X, no XCOM style one. So when you go back and look at them. Um, Privateer Press, by the way, the Warcaster one was March 4th is when they launched it. March 20th is when it um, actually closed. Yeah. And I think so basically, that one. Yeah. Basically, exactly right, right before and right after the pandemic started. <laughs> and yeah. Oh, then man. also, the shutdown happens right after March 20th. So a little late to cancel your pledge. Yeah. So, and they I think they fulfilled pretty good on time. <clears throat> um, yeah. But you have all those guys going on. And so, and then, I mean, yeah. recently the Suez Canal, and there's a lot of global stuff that goes on. Um, but even big companies, along with the small ones, were, were feeling that pinch where there's just shortages, factories closing down, et cetera. Um, but kind of besides that, like I said, on the pivoting side, uh, one thing um, PP did was that uh, stay at home and paint sale uh, in, I think, yeah. April, like right oh, yeah. after. That's they, right. All of a sudden, they're like, hey, let's go put some more stuff on sale. People are going to be sitting at home. So I think that was a smart pivot um, in the fact that, hey, you're going to be home. Like you said, paint sales went up. So yeah. people are finding more time to hobby. I know I found myself painting a little bit more during that time, right at the beginning. And so that, that was a great one. Uh, then um about root and board doing curbside pickup and the option to drive it to your home if you live so far you know depending on how close you are right certain radius was kind of a a smart idea um i always feel a little guilty like i think i had one time one order that like met the will drive it to your house but i was like i don't know i feel bad if they drive it out like i don't <laughs> It's there to like you, you know you were like, like right at the edge of the ten mile radius. Exactly. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm a little on I'm a little on the out. So I was like, uh no, I'll just I'll can't I'll come pick it up in a few days. Like <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so uh I enjoyed that because it made it easier, right? It, for one, going to the stores, being able to go in uh and just have not too many people lingering around. Uh, you know, no matter what you, what your feeling is, like there's a lot of people feeling different ways, but just in the overall consensus for those who did kind of feel that way, it's easy way to get in, get out the website, easy to use, smart to use because 
all your stuff right there. Order made easy, right? Uh, not sure if that that's helped some sales or not because you're not people aren't perusing around picking stuff up off the shelves, maybe. <laughs> you know, so I don't know if sales like yeah dip a little bit. You're like, oh, yeah, that's pretty yoink. But either way, it still allows you to keep keep the business going. So, uh, sorry, long winded response to a few of those things, but <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, also thinking about Kickstarters was the uh, the recent um, Creature Caster Judgment release, right? So that Kickstarter is mm -hmm. going on right now, and and I had to look it up, but they switched their versions. Um, October of 2020 is when they rescaled them, right? So I didn't realize. I was trying to think like when was that, but I don't know if that was a pre-planned move or if that was part of their pandemic. But I know that rubbed a few people the wrong way. Yeah, up quite a bit. So don't think it helped. Well, I mean, time will tell to see how well they they continue on. But yeah, it's hard to make a change. Period. Yeah, and you know, and I don't. You know, I'm I'm unfamiliar with the company in general, and and so you know, they. I don't think they have any other games. I think this is their one and only game. So when, you know, Games Workshop kills the old world and comes out with Age of Sigmar, you know, it irked a lot of people. Yeah. But they still yeah. had other games going. <laughs> you know, like they yeah. you know, they could they could still float. So Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think the company that makes judgment partnering with an existing um, miniatures sculpting company, I think is a fantastic partnership. I think Creature Caster makes some very, very awesome and very interesting miniatures. Um, yep. They've got some great designers and artists, and I think partnering with them was a really good, a really good move. Um, I remember seeing that announcement during 2020, and uh, I thought it was really cool and interesting and a, and a smart move, despite the fact that like I don't really care about Judgment. I haven't really had any interest in it at all, um, but. Uh, I think that's that's a, a good move for them that I think will help them out in the long run once they kind of relaunch yeah. and redefine themselves a little bit. Yep. I made yeah. a comment that if if they had come out like that originally, I probably would have liked the game more. So, yeah. I mean, they're probably making really good moves. Uh, they're just, you know, I think the early adopters are pretty upset. So and that's just it. You got to get left hanging. So then kind of twice shy, you know, little, or what, what has been twice yeah. shy. Yeah. Um, Mon Pac yeah. was kind of like that for a few people, right? The series yeah. Mon Pac kind of ended and a lot of people were like, er, but then years later they relaunch and those people, I think either kind of got over it or they had enough, but again, company that has multiple games. So they're kind of able to yeah. Yeah. support on that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's actually a very good comparison is I think, um, so part of what I remember hearing, like the end of the first Monpoc was uh, because the the releasing the releasing system that they had in place or they they had originally done for the game wasn't really sustainable for the kind of company that Privateer Press was, which is part of the reason why they decided to nix it. And I think probably judge like while it rubs a lot of people the wrong way, I think judgment rescaling re things and scaling things down a little bit uh, is probably a smart move in the end because you know if it's it kind of runs into that that barrier of entry point of like if you need three miniatures in order to play a game and each miniature is fifty dollars and you buy them all individually. And there's not really a starter pack, or if there was a starter pack, it's still like kind of pri on the pricey end. Like that's a high barrier entry. And if you look at something that's kind of similar with God tiers, like all of those warrior packs are like thirty five or forty dollars. Like that's a pretty reasonable thing because you get your hero, plus you right. get the four or five other miniatures that, or three three to five other miniatures that go with it. Whereas with Judgment, like it was a single miniature, and if like the competitive format was a five hero, like a five v five game, you're talking about two hundred and fifty dollars just to get into the competitive scene, 
Yeah. And that's a lot, especially for a game that's brand new. Um, that was a high, that was a high cost point. I think it, I think it turned a lot of people off. Um, and it makes I think it rescaling it down, if it, if it brings the cost, the entry cost down, um, I think it's good. One other complaint that I did see was that they started introducing factions instead of it just being a bunch of different heroes and you can use whoever you wanted. Now they've started introducing factions and we'll see um, yeah. how that goes and how it changes things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ga games evolve, right? That's kind of rules of distance change and you kind yeah. of figure out how you go with it. Um, like I said, I think the biggest part is just like, yeah, canceling out and when the big sale was to it i know a lot of people were like hey the the big miniatures like that was kind of the sale to it right yeah. is you do have these big gorgeous models that you can you can play with and paint cool yeah. and whatever but yeah i mean we'll see yeah. uh, i mean i know also uh, what guild ball got canceled during this that was the end of 2020 that uh, was like that was like uh, august of 2020 i think yeah, yeah. yeah. so that was kind of in there i heard is blood bowl i heard something about blood bowl too but oh, well, blood, I mean, blood, growing. blood ball blood bowl launched a second edition yeah that's what it was um, season yeah. two during yeah 2020. <laughs> yeah they, they do it in seasons as a sports yeah. game yeah, yeah. Season, <laughs> season two they, they change but again big company can <laughs> can make changes yeah. and you know, like, so yeah but then but then in that game it's not like the models are obsolete you know yeah. you can still use your your force you just have to yeah or i can print my yeah. own <laughs> you could do hey you do you man yeah. uh, i yeah. know but when well, i think so i think like just in general you know everyone was trying to navigate this the best way that they knew how and and some companies did really well and and made some pretty pretty good decisions and and some made um you know a mix of decisions and some made uh you know some poor decisions so yeah i think that's yeah yeah something else that uh i saw got mentioned at least in our channel about um one of the one of the complaints was um gw struggling with some uh, availability there's been some issues with availability oh, yeah. and a big part of that also happened uh came about from the beginning of the pandemic all of their factories were shut down factories and warehouses were shut down for like two or three months uh and yeah. then they've just been trying to play catch up along with um and, and it's hard to play catch up with a reduced staff working in your warehouses and your factories on top of an increased demand for your product because people are stuck at home and they want to build some stuff and paint some things. Yeah. And, um, and they tried to push some stuff out as best as they could. And there was a lot of shortages, especially um, down on the ground level with some of the smaller game stores, because it's just like with a lot of other product, the biggest companies are the biggest, um, the biggest accounts get the most. And then everything trickles down from there, unfortunately. Yeah. But, um, I don't think they were the only yeah. company that were dealing with issues like like what did I, I prepaid yeah. for a war mammoth and it still yeah. hasn't arrived and we have no idea yeah. when it's going to arrive like we're talking uh, months now. I think <laughs> well yeah you're talking you're talking like six or eight months or so um, yeah I think I think the war mammoths are supposed to be soon though if I remember oh right. well good um, well, that problem the other thing <laughs> the other thing that GW is working or dealing with on top of a global pandemic is also Brexit finishing and coming to a closure, which has yeah. probably been putting a lot of thorns in their side, which is an entirely different topic. But yeah, Simon was another one that actually has been um, going through some pains last year. Uh, yeah. Part of that is also because their umbrella company, Asmodee, um, changed their distribution exclusivity contracts. Um, so they ended an exclusive account with alliances and started doing their own distribution and then also partnered with a different distributor but they're going through a lot of growing pains of figuring out how to be their own distributor 
and a ton of stuff has just been constantly getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back, especially with the Song of Ice and Fire um, miniatures game. It's gotten to the point where things go for pre-order and we have absolutely no idea when we should be expecting them. And even when we do think we can be expecting them, they get pushed back, you know, at least a month or so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think as a, as a gamer, one of the things that I appreciate during this season is I don't play one or two games exclusively. And so when one game, you know, something doesn't show up on time or doesn't show up for a while, it doesn't bother me because I, I can work on something else. You got other think, toys to play with. I got <laughs> others, right? But I, I think I think for the hobbyist or the gamer who has fewer things to choose from or, or is more exclusive with um, with the games that they play, I can yeah. I can see potentially that their individual frustration levels could be higher than than let's say mine, you know. Yeah. So um, I think I, in some ways I wish I was a little more exclusive. I I have more toys than I need, but um, <laughs> but that's, that's my <laughs> problem and and not anybody else's. But um, but you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely that. Well, I guess maybe, I don't know, speaking of toys, what are you guys building and what are you painting? Uh, right now, I'm not painting anything, although I really want to get some painting done here soon enough because I got, again, plenty to do. <laughs> but uh, I decided I'd do some gluing. Again, going back to that Easter sale, I got those pretty quick and I was like, oh, well, I have these. I'm going to start assembling, getting all my, uh, my Bayou ready. So I busted out some of the boxes that I had and, and the Easter sale stuff that I got um, and started putting those together. And yes, I like I like gluing the plastic models better than super gluing metal models a lot of times. They just go so much quicker and easier. But mm. uh, And most of it was. Most of it was plastic in some fun ways. Though their models still are just spindly little things. I dropped like hands and little bits like so many times and trying to <laughs> fit just right. But yeah. again, I still do enjoy that they have each model is in its own little rectangle of sprue. So you can just kind of clean them up that way. But uh, I got quite a bit of stuff from that. I did like my wind pigs fly model, my Ophelia starter box, some, some gators, a nightmare whiskey gala, mechanized pork chop, like all sorts of stuff built up for that. Wow. Yeah, I know. I got, I, that's probably a good, what, 20 to 25 models that, you know, got built up, um, you know, pretty easily within a few hours. The hardest one's been this metal special Easter bunny. Uh, it's a pig pulp, but it's a bunny and a, and a cracked egg one. Yeah. Other than that. <laughs> Like it's been almost taking me as long to do that as half the other things. So, um, and since I had the plastic glue out, I decided to do my Doctor Strange and Wong um, from Marvel Crisis Protocol. I've had for a while, so slap that guy okay. together. Um, All right. There's there's another company that felt that feels like they just kept churning stuff out and chugging along. Was Atomic Mass Games? Yeah, I was like, going to say I don't, that. I don't yeah. follow them too much, but I definitely do remember seeing quite a number of different posts via social medias about new heroes coming out and uh it just just seemed like they didn't really miss a beat they just kept going yeah. and kept dropping content yeah, yeah. well they, yeah speaking of um i guess I forgot to mention earlier too is yeah they shifted a little bit where they started uh painting at home like doing the streams at home where they were yeah. doing it in studio and stuff like that so yeah all their posts are still there they're characters were all coming i think they delayed a little bit when the everything first kind of hit and that just the typical backups yeah. but then they kind of got back on track and have been yeah like you said really steady at releasing um they even took on x-wing now i think um got passed over to them yeah They're, star wars i think did yeah st- something yeah one of the star wars ips like, I, it's not one i play so i haven't really paid attention but yeah so they're doing all right. Like I said, they think they pivoted pretty well, able to keep things moving. But again, part of a much larger company that can probably have a little more sway. Well, Atomic Mass is pretty small. Well, yeah, but they're under the umbrella of um, 
of is it as As or yeah. Oh yeah, are they under Asmodee now? Yeah, someone so. They've, they've always been just their their own their their own wing of it. So they're not yeah direct reporting, but they are like a kind of a sub guy of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, Dan, um, I wasn't going to bring this up, but since you're we're talking superheroes, um, you know how you and I used to play Hero Clicks back in the day, and and like. Uh, so I was in the store recently and I was walking by their little miniature section. They had a very small hero click section and hero clicks has released, um, the fantastic four. Oh yeah. I saw that individually. So each one plus like, you know, doom and like Kang or something. And, but like, maybe not Kang. <laughs> I think I saw Kang on the next shelf, but, um, unpainted and primed oh. ready to go and i'm just like oh <laughs> hero clicks if they had started doing that back when i was playing i probably would still be playing but i'm so glad that they didn't do that because now i'm enjoying a lot of other things but, yeah. <laughs> and if marvel crisis supposed to, marvel crisis protocol ever puts out fantastic four i'm doomed <laughs> oh that's always the tough one with all the ips now but yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the only thing that matters to me when it comes to. Well, when it does, I'll hook you in finally. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know you'll play. You know it. Yeah. So, All right. Sorry. Back to uh, back to building. <laughs> we segue yeah. back into the subject. <laughs> I know. Let's stay on target. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that's on your hobby table, Dan? Or oh, that's that's it for me. Uh, Again, besides all my printing stuff that I'm trying to get going to, but no, I think yeah. that's all of my. That'll be all of my uh, Malifo built up now, and then hopefully get those prime. Yeah, I just have so much to prime, but I'm just trying to focus on getting everything, all my stuff built. It's all my MCP built now. I have a lot of Infinity to build up still. Got some War Machine. I got about thirty Krell Warriors to build up. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. I hate myself that much, but I want to just build <laughs> a giant army of like sixty of these dudes running across the table. So, yeah. nice. You guys will see yeah. that someday. Well, yeah. I am finishing up painting the last model of my Victoria's starter set. It's one last Ronin that I have to paint up. Um, I was actually working on it uh, right before we started recording. Um, speaking of Trollbloods, I got rid of the Trollbloods army that I had. Um, I got in contact with uh, Mind Taker Miniatures, which is local up to Washington. Um, mm -hmm. I got rid of my Trollbloods army, as well as some other odds and ends things that I had for um, a small craft, a couple craft world things for 40k that I had decided I wasn't going to get into. I got rid of. Um, few other things so uh they actually came out to rune aboard and picked up the stuff from me on april 24th after they got done at guardian games um yeah. talked to nick the store owner and they're actually going we're actually going to become a part of their um their community or like their store outreach uh store partnership program that they are starting up um so rune aboard will eventually in the future um, be like a meeting place uh, and working with Mind Taker Miniatures uh, in the future. So keep your eyes peeled cool. for that announcement and the details for that at some point once it all gets figured out. Yeah. But um, once you know, I get done with for them, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Money yeah, Taker yeah. Miniatures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, since you didn't want to buy the Trollbloods army off of me, you can buy it off of them. <laughs> um, after I get done with these guys, I am finally going to get around to a very big painting project um, that I have been putting aside due to uh, lack of space and then also intimidation. Uh, there's a very large Tiamat print that I was given by uh, Barthel's Marvels, who's an Etsy store. Um, he's a local guy to the Hillsborough area. He's come into a rune board before and he contacted me about, um, donating a miniature, having me paint it, uh, and then put it on display at the store. And, uh, nice. he gave it to me a couple of months ago. 
Uh, it is a very sizable miniature. So if you want to see updates on it, um, I might be working on it during our painting hangouts on Thursdays if I make it. Or you can also follow my Instagram uh, and then look forward to seeing it at Runeboard once I finish it up. The tough part with this miniature is it would be easier to paint if I had an airbrush, which I don't. So it's going yeah. to be getting done by hand, and it's going to take a while. <laughs> but I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to working on this challenge. Uh, it's definitely going to be uh, a beast of a project. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and then the other thing after that, I already have lined up is. Um, I started getting models for the Daughters of Cain army for Age of Sigmar that I'm going to be doing. Uh, and I decided I'm going to do I'm going to do dark elf, dark skin tone theme for them. So like gray, dark gray skin uh, with bright white hair. I haven't quite worked out the the snake half for the Melusai. I think that's how they pronounce it. Um, uh, or the armor. Uh, I haven't quite figured that out, but I'm going to work with one of our locals. Um, Scott is kind of my uh, my my paint color guru that I go to for uh, recommendations and advice and stuff. So I'm going to, once I get some color down for skin on some test models, I'm going to talk to him about what to do for like the metallics and other stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to working on that project because that should be fun. It's going nice. to be a bunch of cool looking murder elves with daggers stabbing everything <laughs> <laughs> nice nice i think uh my i've been kind of light on hobby the last couple of weeks um been pretty pretty busy with work a few extra things going on um i've got um i picked up a, a cygor model that's that's missing his arms and i was gonna do um, this like conversion thing with it and with a little bit of putty and whatnot. And the, the arms that I was going to use, uh, for the conversion actually aren't going to work the way that I want them to. Mm. And so, um, so I'm going to be, um, on the hunt for something else soon. So, um, and, and yeah, so I don't know what to do um i'm currently staring at a venerable dreadnought that's gonna probably make my way closer to the front of the queue um it's painted up in the in the brazen claw scheme so the they're a quarter chapter and um so i'll be working on that and then um but the the weirdest thing not the weirdest thing um is <sighs> Flames of War. I, I had I had made a trade with someone last year, and I got some Flames of War stuff, and so I was uh, I was in the garage tooling around and found the tanks and started playing with the tanks and and was like, oh man, <laughs> I think uh, garage. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. So, um, but here's the thing: is is I. I'm, I think I'm of the age now where I can get away with playing historicals. And so no, <laughs> I actually want to play historicals anyway. And there's a few eras that I'm interested in, in getting. And so, um, you know, um, I was pretty fortuitous and actually got a 3d printer last week. What, what? And <laughs> what? so, yes, I got one. And so, I spent the weekend kind of cleaning up my hobby space a little bit to create um, the for the place that I'm going to put it. And um, my goal is to print six millimeter armies for every era that I want to play in. And so I'm <laughs> um, pretty excited about that. So uh, there's I found a couple websites that that do uh, files for uh, for ancient armies and stuff. So um, I've been kind of poking around a little bit online. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, like I said, I, I think I'm getting of the age now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not that old. 
But like my kids make me feel old and everyone around me. Just me feel old. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, hobby stuff is fun. And, um, and I really like our paint parties that we have on Thursdays. Um, I think I missed last week's unfortunately, but like we have, you know, we just have good conversation and it's such a, it's such a strong encouragement to keep going. And so I just want to say to any of our listeners, um, if you're not actively painting right now, you need just a little bit of push to get you started, get, get you kickstarted to restart painting. Um, or even just, you don't even have to paint. You can, if you have things you need to build, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it just hobby night is basically what it is. Um, but you know, hobby night is not an alliteration where paint party is. So we grab that. Yeah. But um, anyway, yeah, I, I yeah, just want to encourage. Dan. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan, you some motivation, Dan. I know. Well, I, so, I did it once, but it's not a working time for me. <laughs> it's it, just because yeah, it, 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 it starts at eight, and then yeah. it goes until the last person gets off. Yeah, and so yeah, some I, some people. I usually say, don't hop on to like eight forty-five or nine because I usually come yeah. home and and have something to eat, and then yeah, and yeah, and then pop on for like an hour or so. People yeah. are usually there till like about ten, ten thirty, and then it kind of wraps up. But I, I I love having that designated time though. It's on my calendar. I actually put it on my personal calendar, and so unless I have like a you know a meeting or something for work, like I'm pretty much there. And and like I don't know. So I just want to encourage folks. We do it on the Discord, and so we use one of the voice channels there. And and if you're brave, you can turn on your camera, and it's fun. You can. You know, we see people and see what we're working on and stuff like that. But it's every Thursday at 8. And then I also want to talk about a uh, book club. Mm -hmm. So we started our first book club. Um, month one was last month in April. And we decided to read the rules of engagement, which are the rules for conquest and the last argument of kings. And, man, we had a really good conversation. And... Um, and like it was fun to be able to kind of dissect things and and kind of look at it and things like that. So so I think our plan is to alternate where we're like read a rule set and then read something fiction, read a rule set. Read, it's something that's like generally game related, I think, is because that's the space that we you know we hang out in. Yeah. So this month, um, I can't remember. It's on my Kindle, but uh, the name of the book, but it's a fiction book. And uh, we're going to, and so for the month of May, we'll be reading that book. And then the last Sunday of the month uh, in the afternoon, which is, I think, the perfect time to have a book club meeting, you know, yep. we'll just get together and we'll talk. So um, if you uh, want some more details on that, um, it's on our Discord. It's also on our Facebook page. And uh, you can tag any one of us and bug us about it. So yeah. shadow and bone, right? Right. Shadow and Bone, that's it. There it is. Dan with the recollection. Good. Oh, is call. that the next book you're reading? Yeah. yeah. Book for this month. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Because yeah. I just watched that entire Netflix series. <laughs> and I think that's why it was selected, was because of that. Yeah. So you should, uh, you know, it's not too late. You can <laughs> pop in and uh, get the book. Yeah. Yeah, so, maybe. I, yeah, I have, I have a lot of other stuff going on. I, I have a hard time finding time to sit down and read mostly cause like I can't, I can't find a comfortable position to sit and yeah. be able to read. Unfortunately, yeah. not like I used to be able to. Yeah. And I still got so much painting to do. I thought I was doing good on my painting backlog and I feel like I'm not cause I'm only about <laughs> like 40 models deep on my like 250 <laughs> models for the year that I wanted to try and get through. So like I got rid of the Trollbloods, which was a hundred models off of my list, and then all of my daughters of cane stuff in, which was fifty models. So <laughs> there you go. We're well, making a little bit of progress. So. Yeah. Well, I think uh, it was a good episode. Um, I think tackling that conversation was uh, was good, and obviously it's not a one and done, you know. And we, I think all of us, we want the companies that we buy from and games that we play 
to do well and yeah you know and to be engaging with the community and yep. you know and and like help us love you more is as i think the message i want to send so yeah but yeah so thanks for everyone uh for listening to our show uh we'd love to hear from you personally uh you can join us on our discord you can join us on our facebook page you can email us directly at spellstormminiatures at gmail.com. Uh, there are several things you can do to just support us. Uh, first, you can tell your friends. You can like us on Facebook. You can leave positive reviews on iTunes if you like us. And um, um, and then you can also do so monetarily. We have a Patreon. We have a Ko-fi. We have, you know, affiliate links. You know, we're affiliated with Noble Knight Games now. If you want to buy online, there are all these, all these weird things you can do to help us if you want. Um, but more importantly, the thing that we'd love to see is just more engagement from you. talk about it huh <laughs> that's saddening well i mean i think we do i think we're just measuring measuring <laughs> how to talk about it yeah so